waiting. And I mean, it's best of one. You never know. I feel like that's the lesson that must be learned at this point in time. What do you think, Sam? Well, that's the important bit, right? Is that every match matters. You need three to go into the majors. And if you lose three, that's it. You're out. You're done. It's not even a best of three to fall back on here. You need to perform on these single maps. And so if you mess up the veto, if you wind up on a weak map for yourself, that can come back to haunt you. Or if you start weak on one map, and I would say, for those of you watching at home, you have to change your mentality too. Don't think about, you know, when they're going to get to the semifinals or anything like that. Every one of these games is sort of a potential final. They really do all matter. That's really important. You get off to a good start. And Dignitas, they will start on the terrorist side, only Team Spirit on the CT side. They've got Surtis and Kibakan over at the A-bomb side. Only two people for what looks like a full-on A execute. They got the smokes, they got the grenades, and looks like they're already going for it. Yeah, and just to make that perfectly clear for everybody, Sirtis is the coach. He's standing in right now for Coldy, who couldn't make it. So Kibakin already starting off pretty strong with a nice headshot on Megis Boy. Now it's up to Sirtis, and Sirtis even finds one before getting traded. But then Cajun gets into the fight and just clears the A site. I look at this smart play from Dignitas. They go and take over CT spawn. That makes it so much harder for Team Spirit to go for any kind of a retake. Bit of a weird fight. Actually, Dima gonna hit that shot. Cajun caught lingering out in the open. MSL picks up one, but he's gonna go down. Dima with the second headshot leaves Rubino and he's gone. Davkos takes him out with a USP. Team Spirit off to a good start there. That's one hell of a retake. That was just headshots. Headshots coming through in the end. I mean, Cajun kind of getting caught out in the open before he can make it back into cover. And then for the rest of Dignitas, just not able to hit their shots. You saw MSL struggling there. I mean, they were in the right position as far as like the tactics are concerned for Dignitas. They're occupying CT, the bomb is planted for them. It's Team Spirit who has to come to them. But if you're gonna miss your shots, it's just not gonna work out for you, Dane, the Danes, for the Danes, rather. No, I think we, we're we gonna have to put some of the blame at least on Cajun then. Um, not supposed to be in that position at that point in time, not really anything that he can do from there. So, bit of a misstep, definitely will cost them. They did get the bomb plant down. That's why they're not really buying anything, but two flashbangs makes me happy. Yeah, two flashbangs, exactly. It's $200 investment, and it might actually allow you to get into the site and get the bomb planted. So that's the big, uh, that's the goal here for Dignitas, and they aren't wasting any time. There's the first flash, keep picking in the perfect position to just go for the spray, but he's not able to find a kill, and that allows for the bomb plant to happen here for Dignitas. Back-to-back -back bomb plants. This is a great start for Dignitas after losing the pistol. Oh, and a kill on Surtis. They just jumped him with the Glocks in that corner. That's going to give him the M4 now. The full rotation is already in here. Team Spirit looking for it. They do have some grenades, really importantly, still on Sotvik. That one Molotov that they're going to be able to use, just put it out. That's Dab cost for two big kills of the MP9, and that leaves just Config left here in a one versus four. Good rotation if he had had, you know, an AWP or something, but just with a Glock, not really going to matter. Still, I like the idea, and it's going to give at least a kill and a bomb plant for Dignitas. Yeah, they have some options now, Dignitas. They hardly invested anything in this round at all. And so, yeah, you can see already the money is going to start building for them, where this should actually be a pretty reasonable buy. Cajun can even go for the AWP. Full nades across the board here for Dignitas. And so you lose the pistol. This is the ideal situation to come back in for Dignitas, because you're only down two rounds, and you get a full buy, all of the nades. And so MSL now, he has all of the options at his disposal. He gets to basically go to his playbook and say, whichever play I want, I can pick and choose now. And even this, I mean, a third round AWP buy for Cajun, that's pretty impressive. With nades and Kevlar. With nades and Kevlar, they got everything. And he's, he went for the, he, I guess he got the spawn close to A, so he's trying to see if he can catch anyone crossing into connector, which he did just see Kevakan running up there. Oh, Good this is shot. Oh, wow, that's very, very nicely done. Just the patience play there. It is not risk-free to linger around. If you look at the minimap, there's nobody nearby Cajun. If they jump him when he's there, he's gone. Yeah, but that, that's almost like you watch that happening, and it's almost like watching Cajun's experience come, come to the fore because he just had each angle covered one after the other. You're going to peek here. He just held that angle. He knew that he had a read on Kibakan, and, and Kibakan not able to do anything about it apart from just die. So bit of a rough start here for Team Spirit. They're down a man already. Dignitas still have quite a few grenades to work with. Miggy's gonna look for the fight over in B-Halls and lose it though. So that brings it back to a four on four here. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised, but that is Miggy's. Like, that's, that's his play style. He looks for duels. He hunts for fights constantly. Look at the great smokes that go into the middle here. Now they're going to try and wrap into Catwalk. Rubina will trade that kill on Dima and Sotvik. He's actually jumping with the UMP. Somehow Cajun still wins that fight. 
Glock close range. That's going to put it two on three with the bomb gone down. Surtis and Davkost, they're both coming in from the kitchen area. And look at this. There's still a Molotov and the smoke on Thigmas House. When they realize where they're coming from, those grenades are going to be huge. Surtis running in. Now he has to push forward. The Molotov actually forcing him into the bomb site. He's going to hit the headshot on Rubino. That's a good start. But the instant kill coming through. Config and Cajun simultaneously going to make it around for Dignitas. Uh, the key moment there, and uh, Cajun really, this was his round. He did everything in a sense because he gets that first kill. Yes, he stays alive here, gets that wing on to uh, Softic. But the most important part for me is that he spots both players in Kitchen after that. We don't get it in the replay, but when he's holding it with Kitchen Window, he's looking there, he spots both players. And so then Dignitas know exactly where Team Spit are coming from. So the, the hold for them, that after plant position, becomes so much easier. Not the best start all of a sudden for Spirit, not just because they lost that round, because they don't have money to buy. They've upgraded their pistols, they've got uh, some flashbangs. I always hope that when people buy flashbangs like this, on this map, that they all stack in one bomb site in the middle. Instead, they're pretty much spread out all across the map here, and that's just, I think, not really a recipe for success. It's going to be hard to find a lot of kills like that. Config challenging the smoke and running right through, actually could have flash then, but somehow he managed to turn around and Davkost ends up going down. Playing with fire. Use the smoke, get out. He's gonna re-smoke it as well, but he's still at risk. And Config is just trying to haul to get back to that A slope, and he is just barely gonna manage it. Okay. Because he doesn't want to drop that AK. They want to keep everybody alive here, Dignitas. And well, that's not gonna happen. MSL already down. Rubino getting tagged down as well in the pal in Palace, so they have to be a little bit careful here, Dignitas. You can afford to sack the Galil. That's on MSL. Okay, two thousand dollar investment. But if you lose Cajun, if you lose an AK, that's a real problem. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Dima is going to be close on it here, just tagging it up once, but this is great play. Rubino's probably going to go up with a bomb now, just because he heard that tag, he had to stick around. Oh, he just manages to live through it on 10 health, but that's a very good idea. What they did that last round, just to point it out, that B push that they were going for, it's really important to watch out for the smokes that they put up here and at the top of ramp. Once you see these two smokes going down, it is a pretty safe bet that someone is going to try and make their way through into the B bomb side. So it's pretty basic stuff on Mirage, but it's worth pointing out that those are key smokes for any kind of a B push if you want to try and do it, and that's what they made wording as house. So just some basic stuff, but still, um, it's nice to see that, they, that they're not failing them, because actually, teams sometimes do that. They end up missing the smoke, especially in window, and it can lead to some really bad things things. Okay, then. This is where it starts to get a little random for Dignitas, where they're just going to have to look for fights, look to win. We might have a chance here for Cajun. There's the flash. Perfect setup. Unfortunately, Softic is not able to follow up on it. And Cajun's going to hunt him down and win the duel. But this is the scary thing, is that Dignitas, they're playing against an, un an unknown roster. Like, what is their strategy? How do Team Spirit play? Dignitas are having to figure all this out on the fly. Look at this, like this Dima position up here. I mean, that's not something that you see very often. Dignitas getting caught off guard a little bit. A great transfer. Look at how close that was to taking down MSL as well. It could have definitely worked out. Rubino will be going down a Certus. It's a three-on-three, three, but with a big advantage for Dignitas in the health. And also, just if you look at where they're going on the map here, Davkost is going to be alone. He does have the AWP. And actually, I think people forget about Davkost just because he's usually not in these top teams. But he actually can be quite dangerous. So I look forward to seeing a little bit of that here. Tries for the scope. That was very close. And now backup is here. Both players, and yeah, soon to be a third here as well. Certus isn't too far away, but they're already pushing out onto the side. It's Kibaka looking to deny the plan. He will do it. Not going to get the follow-up kill on Magus, though, and that's the, that's the turning point here because now Certus has to go into a retake with 19 HP, and that's not a whole lot of... I mean, that's really just not a whole lot of life. He doesn't have a kit. He doesn't have nades, and so he's making the correct decision here, which is to back off and try and save his rifle. Have to give it to Certus, though. Um, I mean, he is a stand-in, he's the coach. Coldy is the usual player for Spirit, but he had some visa issues, so he wasn't able to attend the event. Certus stepping in, but Certus is finding some kills. It's not like he's just getting run over. He's already got three kills on the board, and he's making the correct play here, which is to back off. Yeah, that must be rough, and we've th we've had this happen a couple of times in the past where a coach will have to stand in your threat, did it for an IP at one point. Yeah. Uh, it's never an ideal situation, so... Got to be rough, especially considering the magnitude of this qualifier and just how difficult it is to actually make it through. That's the fifth round going to be uh, leading into that one. And 3-2 favoring Dignitas here early on on the T side. Hate to say it, but I think Duncan might be right for once. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I feel a little bit bad there for Sotvik because he actually got the leg shot on Cajun. He pulled the trigger first and landed the shot first. It was just happened to be a leg shot. So that's a bit of a sad turn of events there for him. Could have been a good start for Team Spirit in the round. But I think that this game in particular, this match, is just really going to come down to headshots. A lot of it. 
Dignitas are going to just look for duels. We see Magus, we see Cajun constantly hunting for picks. That's that's the, going to be the style here. Dignitas are just going to say, we're better aimers, we're better players than you. We're going to just try and hunt you down and not let this turn into a tactical game. It doesn't even need to get there if you're Dignitas at this point. You should feel so confident that you should just be willing to take fights everywhere, not play your usual style. Everywhere but the B bomb side, because that's where the whole team spirit is stacked. And I actually love this play coming out of the CIS team, but they're going to lose two people early on. The stack is not working. Finally, Surtz is coming in with two big kills. He runs out of bullets, otherwise that could have probably been a third one. Daft Crust in the corner, not gonna get the first click in there. Goes for the flick, takes down Rubino, that's a nice shot, and he has the bomb right in front of him. Config actually getting tagged by that one and almost going down, so that could have been it. Daft Crust maybe slightly out of control with the shots coming through. He knows where Config is, and he's got the close range P250 as well. That's a good weapon for it. And there it is. Davkos going to be able to close it out. Triple for him. The stack works. I love it for Team Spirit. You have to take that risk. If you're playing a team like Dignitas, I see you've got to do it. What was that face? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm talking about, man. Three kills, a dropped AWP. But Sirtis, again, two key kills with that M4 that he saved from the last round. And that's, I mean, that's why you try and save your rifles. Maybe that rifle makes all the difference for you in the round. Even if your teammates are on pistols, a stack plus the M4, and it turns around completely for Team Spirit. So three to three, tied up now. And Spirit, they've got a second chance because that was an eco round for them. So a lot of money in the bank. They get to go for full nades, and they're just nading Config into oblivion. 50 HP already here for the Dane, and he hasn't even seen anybody yet. And it looks like Dignitas are going to sort of do a repeat of the pistol round, only with way more guns and smokes. And if they do that, Team Spirit's positioning is... Especially Daft Cost and Kabakan are going to have a really hard choice because they can either leave Sirtis alone on that bomb site, he's going to be inside the smoke perimeter, mm -hmm. or they can go and try and help him out and sort of run through the smoke. I, it's really hard. You have only a couple of seconds to make that choice, so we'll see what they do. It's kind of tough right now because... Well, Team Spirit, at least, they've kind of given up mid. Kibakan is kind of hanging around in, in connector, trying to get some eyes towards underpass, that sort of thing. But for the most part, there's going to be three players on the A site fairly quickly here for Team Spirit when this execute comes through. And there we go. Davkos going to find the first shot. Drops that myself. And that's the strong start that they're looking for. Sirtis even finding another kill. He's staying on live on that bomb site as well. This is working out very well, much better than you would think for Dignitas. And look at Kibakan running into Sandwich, challenging that. It might have been a bit too much. He ends up going down. Maybe a bit of panic now. They re-smoke that stairwell. Still no bomb plant happening. Cajun, in fact, is sort of trapped over by the ticket booth with it. He's going to pick up a kill on Dima, though. Not at all a bad way to get back in the round. Well, that was some key information brought up as well. And this is just a gamble by Cajun. Planting CT like that. He's thinking that they're both staying towards the jungle area. And instead, now it's all going to come down to whether or not Cajun wins this duel versus Sotfik and CT. Sotfik's slowly working his way up. Cajun hits the headshot. And now it's Rubino and Cajun holding 1v2 versus Davkos. And Davkos has got a tough scenario on his hands because he doesn't have a kit. So he's going to have to find one here on the site. There's the flash. Wins the duel. Rubino so very low. And he has no idea where he's playing from Davkos. Man, that is rough. He almost managed to clutch it again for his team, but it doesn't work out. Now, just to reiterate what we were talking about here, when these smokes go down over by the jungle and then the one in CT spawn, because the positioning here with the blue crosses are basically what they're working for, these people on the other side, they've got to figure out if they want to run through the smoke or not. And, I mean, at this time, Serta stayed alive for a very long time, mm -hmm. but if they don't run through the smoke, he's going to be alone. So their positioning for Team Spirit is great that they have three people there, but two of them were really hard to put into play after the smokes went down. And look at it this time. They have a much more aggressive setup with that one AWP on Dafkos. What's going on? Well, we saw this guy in the eco round win for uh, Team Spirit just a couple rounds ago. He went ham, got three kills, a couple of them flashy as well. So, I mean, him with the AWP, it's a pretty solid thing. And he might be able to find a pick here, but he whiffs it completely. And in the meantime, he's lost three of his teammates. So that's pretty much it. Davkos going to back off to try and save the AWP instead of actually trying to take the fight. He has to. He has no choice. Yeah, got to try and run away. But they have so much time to hunt him. And because, actually, their economy is not great. I think they, if they lose more than two people in this hunt, then probably just call it off and leave it at that. Now they know where he is, and they're all running for it. Look at the minimap. They're just instantly on the fox hunt here. They've got him boxed. Megas even kind of hanging around in CT. So he's boxed in now. At least Dignitas know that there's no chance of uh, like a Snacks Ninja or something coming in. <laughs> yes. And so there it is, another kill. This is where you start questioning things if you're Dignitas. Is yeah. it worth it? I mean, if you can take away the op, that is almost worth it because in theory, Team Spirit shouldn't have the money to rebuy an op if they if he dies. But then you're right for pointing out Dignitas' economy. It isn't stellar for them either. So it looks like Dignitas want to play the safe game. They're going to allow the AWP to stay in play. And they're just going to make sure that they keep building their economy steadily here.
Another worry, just to add to the stack that's building for Team Spirit, is the fact that Cajun has really turned up. He's usually quite good on this map, but he's at 11-0 and 4 right now, which is uh, just a very good start for him individually. Um, Magus is at the bottom, and Config is too. Those are the two, two sort of stars of the team, and they're not doing much, and they're still playing very well Dignitas. So I would be scared right now if I was Team Spirit, but that's the way to get started. The 1 AWP saved, and that's come back to haunt them now. This is forcing Rubino to rotate back very quickly, and he's not going to make it in time. So he can't actually save the op. Now there are two ops in play here for Team Spirit. That was such a key kill to start things off. Five to three, Dignitas in the lead, up to two rounds. But Team Spirit actually has some firepower to play with here in this round. This is where it gets a little tricky for Dignitas. One of them in the middle on Quebec, and that's an interesting position. He's going to get downed immediately. Config manages to crouch almost under his scope. He did see him, but it's not an easy shot to hit the box. And Dima wants to pick up the AWP. Not going to be allowed. And Rubino with the kill on certain Zapkos. Can you do it? He's going to pick up the one kill now. The grenades are coming into his position. He's going to get basically every single kill from here on out. Sotvik is running in from behind. He picks up the AWP, but he can't get it done. Zapkos overextending just a little bit. Ends up going down. Triple kill for Fox. Six to three for Dignitas now. And this will be the buy round for Team Spirit. That was an eco round in the last one. But still, I, it, do, it does feel like Team Spirit right now, they're just trying to fight fire with fire. They're looking for duels. They're, they're hungry to go out and try and take the fights. And you're kind of playing into Dignitas' hands if that's the strat that you're going to use, right? But, I mean, at its core, what are you going to do? If, you're, if you don't feel confident in your tactical game, you're playing with your, your, you're playing with your coach as a stand-in. So you don't perhaps feel like our tactics are going to be real polished. We're not really going to be able to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dignitas on a tactical level. You got to look for duels. You got to try and go with the brute force method. It's just not really working out when Cajun is hitting all of his shots. I'm surprised that they're not doing more to try and be aggressive team spirit here. You know, try and push B hallways, A apartments, anything like that, um, just to try and catch them off guard because if they play a default game, there's almost no way that they're going to be Dignitas, it seems. Sotvig with a nice battle again in the middle. Almost gets the second one on Config. That's so close. He almost managed to peek out behind the cart in the middle there. It's clever. I mean, that's that boost clearly is a go-to kind of play here for Team Spirit. Getting up on the railing, look, looking over the short smoke. And that was after Kibakan had actually checked to make sure that underpass was clear. And so there is a method here between the two. They are working to control that mid space. And while Dignitas this time, they got slapped. Config just barely hangs in there. And they're down a man right now, Dignitas, but they still have a good nade count. Two smokes only, though, so it is a little tricky. Cajun almost getting caught. He's turning around. He must be feeling lonesome for backup right now. He's the only one in the middle. And I think they may realize Sotvik with really good intuition. Going to be able to take down Cajun B. That leaves it three versus five. Surtis and Kibaka holding onto the A bomb side. They don't have to win any fights here. They just have to stay alive and make sure the backup is coming in. And it's a good refrag from Dima. Still overextending a little bit. That's not necessary. Ends up going down at Leaves Vegas. He gets dropped as well. Kibaka with a good double kill. And that's Team Spirit making it 6 4. Not bad at all. Davkost is playing out of his mind, in fact. He's got th 13, 1, and 5. That's actually out doing Cajun and Rubino. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, you were right pointing it out earlier. We're not really seeing, you know, the config, the snappy config, or the Magus, you know, really get into the fight just yet here for Dignitas. Those are the two heavy hitters for Dignitas, the guys who are supposed to get the kills. And Magus is sitting on two kills right now. So, need to see them wake up a little bit here. But still, I mean, this is an acceptable scoreline if you're Dignitas. You've got six rounds on the T side. Team Spirit have only got four. But again, Davkost winning the duel versus Cajun. This is all just in the small details as well. They changed up their positioning. But Davkos just too quick for Cajun right now. Cajun kind of cooling off here after that strong start. That's got to get under Cajun's skin as well because he's the one who has the positional advantage early on. You know, he's already there and it's just not working out. Sotvik also doing a great job in the middle defending. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, five versus three. All they have to do on this A bomb side is stay alive. Wait for the backup. They don't have to take any big fights here and win any duels. Davkos going to be in position to take down MSL though. This guy is spinning out of control. This is what I well, I mean, this is what I mean when it comes down to Dignitas having to figure out what Team Spirit are going to do on the fly because they aren't going to have that much, much information to go off of. Another fantastic round here for Davkos with a quad kill, bringing it to six five. Team Spirit closing that gap, but Dignitas are having to learn how Team Spirit play this entire time, and it doesn't look like they're just they're they're expecting that mid aggression. The the mid boost keeps catching them off guard. Davkos with the aggressive peaks into 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 pit rather that's definitely hurting them, and so Dignitas right now. They have to figure it out. I love it. The revolver. 
transition. So Almost as good as the shoddy transition. Almost. I don't know. I actually might even prefer the revolver one. Stop, man. It's so good, isn't stop. it? Stop. Trying to trigger me. R8 for life. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just a tricky spot here for Dignitas. Because you're right. They're going to get triggered by that. They're going to start getting frustrated with the fact that these guys just keep challenging us. We're not. We don't know where they're going to challenge us either. So if we aren't winning the shots, winning those duels, that level of frustration might start mounting. It absolutely will, um, especially now that they're back to pistols. Their economy has run out. It was never that great to begin with, as we pointed out earlier. So they're going to be in a position to equalize the scoreline here. Davkost finding his 18th kill. And they are playing on land here. I mean, this is just very, very impressive. That's 19 and leaving Megisk in a one on five. So he's going to be going down to Dima at the end of it. What a, what a, what a, just a level that he's pulling out in 19, one and five for Davkost. This is a great, I mean, comeback as well for Team Spirit. It's been a lot of kind of streaky sort of play here. Dignitas chaining three, losing the one round to Team Spirit, but then chaining another three. Now it's Spirit putting three rounds in a row together. And we'll see. I mean, I mean, if they can finish 9-6, if they can just close out the rest of this half, Team Spirit, going into the second half, they've already won the CT pistol. Things could get interesting. I have to remind you that every map matters in this format. Swiss format, three maps, three map wins, you're through to the majors. Three losses, you're out. And so every game matters at this point. You need to win everything and be on point in these best of ones. It is definitely true because no matter what, you can be quite sure. And later on, if you're dangerous, you're going to be playing even better teams for yeah. the, the further you go. So it's going to be tricky. If you start dropping maps to teams that you probably feel like are, are sort of walkthroughs that you should be winning, then I don't know what happens, you know. Someone is going to be heartbroken at the end of this qualifier. That is for sure. You can't afford to drop down into the melee. Oh, yeah, look you need, at this. Oh, look, yeah, exactly. Keep back and doesn't look like Megas Boy realized where the shot was coming from. That's unreal. Did he think a teammate was with the AK? This is what we were asking for earlier. Why weren't they pushing aggressive? And now they are. That's really important. Config also goes down. Softbeak still being a bit of a champion in the middle. Finally going to get taken out by Rubino. That is a four on three. And they're trying to push through Dima. Almost getting the shot on Rubino. He's left at 12 health. Now the bomb, can it be put down here? Nice shot from Davkost. And even better, Surtis is actually playing over by T-Spawn. And this is a great job. He's just falling back and buying time. That's very intelligent play, actually. In the meantime, Kibaka will pick up the shot. Cajun hitting a nice headshot on Davkost. But he only has 35 seconds. Has to go and pick up the bomb. And he's sandwiched in. Still a winnable situation with 30 seconds, but... Look at this, Sirtis just changing it up completely. He's going to let Cajun B keep thinking that he's back in T-Spawn, and instead, he's looking to link up with his teammate. Kibakan is going to be moving through CT, it looks like. Kind of wondering. And it does look like eventually he will try and set up that crossfire, perhaps, or no, they're just going to go together as a team. I like this buddy system in play here for Team Spirit. Going into the retake, if you drop one, the other one will get the trade kill versus Cajun, and you will be able to get that inside retake. The double kit set up here for Team Spirit as well, so they have a little bit more time to work with. Cajun in a good position. There comes the spray. He's still got plenty of health. Surtis around the corner. Cajun actually right through the box doing a bit of damage. He's going to go for it again. Surtis running right in. And that's a clutch. Cajun in a one on two. He picks it up with the bomb time as well, forcing them out. That is a very important round there. And that's got a sting if your team spirit. Absolutely, because that's where that's where you kind of just showed your lack of experience where <laughs> Kibakin, like, he takes the fight. You, you find out where Cajun is, and before Sirtis can get in position to back him up and guarantee that kill on Cajun, Kibakin just charges in and tries to take the fight straight up with Cajun, tries to be the hero. That turns it into a 1v1, and that's not what you want versus Cajun B, especially not when it's your coach who's the stand-in, who's the last guy up against Cajun. If anything, it should be the other way around. It should be Kibakin in the 1v1, right? So, yeah, that's where you start to see the cracks appear somewhat there for uh, for Team Spirit, where they, they just show a little bit of uh, lack of experience, and that ends up costing them. Dima slightly early with the grenade, and they put out the Molotov as well here just to try and see if they can force them back. What they don't realize is that all of Dignitas are here. Kebakit is pushing down on the A ramp, so he's going to know soon that something is up. Dima taking the fight against the whole Dignitas team and ends up coming out way short. Gets taken out by Magus, who is very low on the scoreboard, but finally he gets a little bit done. That cost nice shot mid-air to stop MSL, and he's looking over the smoke. Can he spot Rubino? He can't. 
The Norwegian player has the better angle, and Sotvik and Kibakan now two versus three. They need this round. They've got to have this round. Sotvik going to be going down, and now that leaves Kibakan on what would have been a great flank. Again, he was pushing that A ramp early, but when his whole team is gone, it won't matter. And especially now that he's shown himself, Magus is going to be going down. But look at Cajun. He still has the models off. And actually, they're going to run all the way to the A bomb site. Does he spot it? I yeah. think he did. He spots Rubino jumping. So that's some good information gained. But they still have grenades to make use of here as well, doing the toss. No smoke, so that was a little bit of a risky moment there for Cajun, but he will be able to make it across. And now Kibakan has to worry about where Rubino's coming from, and Rubino's in the perfect oh. position to ruin him. Easy kill for Rubino. And it's an 8-6 scoreline now for Dignitas, going into the last round of this first half. They've got oh. everything going their way. They've turned it around here, Dignitas. I wonder did he see the gun barrel? I think maybe that was Looks that's like what did. showed it. Um, that's just very unfortunate. If Dafkos gets that second kill on Rubino, who knows? Who knows? 15th round is coming up, and Team Spirit to play it with. There we go. There we go. I see you doing a fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, they, what what they got to fight with is in this round is nothing. Five sevens, deagles, sure some grenades, but that's obviously not the way you want to end the half. You want to have like a strong strong exit, but uh, this is going to be difficult. No, this is tough. This is real tough for uh, Spirit. But they've won They've won an eco round in the past already. That was off of Davkos who managed to pick up an AWP and get a triple kill. But they have been able to win these sorts of situations versus Dignitas. They've been effective with the stacks as well. And right now they're going for just that Team Spirit. They're going for a stack on A. Unfortunately, Dignitas, they're on top of this. Look at this, the stack up. Config still going to trade one for one, but that's more than enough. That gives everything here to Dignitas, who now gets to go onto the B site for free unless they drop the bomb. In mid, geez, cutting it a bit close, aren't we, Dignitas? That would have been, I mean, that looks so great, didn't it? Flashing their way through the smoke. But in the end, it's Rubino with a triple kill. He ends at 19, still not surpassing Davkost, who's at 21 kills. And nobody else from his team is even in double digits. Yeah, that's the problem. And if you look at the stats, that, that's where it starts to get a little painful. Sure, Davkost, I mean, you can try and do this. You can try and hard carry. I mean, you've had situations like this in the past, obviously, where a player is just going ham, but then the rest of his teammates aren't quite able to connect with their shots. If you go to Dignitas, you've got two people who are high double digits right now, and then the rest of the team are kind of just following it up. But that second player that's actually having the impact, Rubino, and then you've got Cajun. Between the two of them, they're doing a lot of the work for Dignitas right now. It's also interesting, uh, just we don't get to see Davkos that much in sort of high-level Counter-Strike, but we have seen him in the past, and he has had performances like this, so it's not a complete shocker. It's just consistency seems to have been an issue for him. But, you know, if you can play on LAN in a big qualifier like this, certainly that will, even if they don't win this game particularly, that should open some eyes for, for you know, whatever talent scouts are out there. People are going to be thinking, all right, maybe it's worth looking into this guy because this is obviously a very good performance from him already. MSL getting flashed and trying to fall back, almost out of bullets. He'll end up going down, Cage in the back line looking with the pistol. He's very good with the pistol, he's got to be careful. There's another one, he's looking for the headshot, triple kill, Cajun taking out Surtis and Dima both and Kibakan without a bomb and in a one on four. My god, that looked like they had the start for it. They really overran MSL but it wasn't enough and maybe he's Finding his fourth kill, somewhere. His fourth kill, right? There we go. In the 16th round, he manages to finally break the streak and get a kill in there. But yeah, you got to give it to Cajun. And, and more importantly, I mean, that's that's them trading CT rounds basically on this map here. Team Spirit picked up the CT round in the first half. Well, now Dignitas get the strong start on their CT side. 10 to 6 now. Dignitas well in the lead. And now really, even as far as the map is supposed to play out, CT-sided map, they have a terrific lead on Team Spirit now. So this is where we're going to have to see if Team Spirit, if they can start hitting the shots and you know fighting back into this because they've gone for a force buy here in the 17th round. They're feeling it. They're feeling hopeful. MSL, that's uh, Molotov he has primed right now. So if he's early and he spots them right around the corner, Puts up the Molotov, that's going to mean they have to run through, and Rubino is there to catch them. Not the best start, also a kill with the UMP for MSL, the bomb is down. And now a third kill coming in for MSL, finally gets taken out, but that's a great round for Dignitas. They're going to be excited about that one. You hear a little bit of a battle cry coming out for them at the end of it. That sounded like Rubino to me. Still, strong, strong start. And strong start to the second half, and this is kind of what we expect now. Once we get onto the CT side, this is where we really start to expect to see players, well, I mean, like Cage and like Config, they're going to start shining. So, because Team Spirit have to come to them. And this is where you can also see, some, I mean, where we might see 
Team Spirit struggle a little bit because of that standard, because of the fact that Certus is standing and they don't have their full roster. Coldy couldn't make it here due to a visa issue. And T side, you know, everybody's got a role. Everybody has their grenades that they need to throw, their positions, their angles that they hold. And so things get thrown out of whack when you have a stand in on your T side. It's not ideal. Oh no. They run through and they both end up looking the wrong way somehow. That's incredible. Convict, even though they pretty much have the round, he's gonna go for the fight anyway. He gets tricked under that last kill. Rubino a little bit too quick, but you can tell that Convict's not happy uh, being in the middle of the scoreboard. He wants to get even higher up there. Somewhere out there, so Scoots is, uh, is ready to rain fire on him. Get, get, <laughs> get Config warmed up and ready to go. That's the important bit. I mean, it's, it's, this is a tough kind of uh, setup as well for uh, the teams. Like, this kind of setup, it, it is a bit difficult. With this many teams playing in this format, it means that you're playing one best of one per day. So you show up, and you better be on form, because even if you manage to get rolling, if you have a slow start, it doesn't matter. You're playing one best of one, so you need to be on point immediately. And while trade of kills there actually is a double push in a palace, and Magus Boy is there to save it because Cajun takes a bullet to the face. That's also so smart for the Inside. They peek on either side of that column, so no matter where you're you're peeking, you're gonna have a bad angle. So a little bit interesting. But look at this great push from Dima all the way into the bomb site. You see Config definitely didn't expect that. But Rubino's here to pick up the kill anyway. They get themselves into these positions, but they can't get out again. Magus gonna get the kill on Davkost and followed up on Surtis. Now he's starting to get warmed up. Triple kill currently. Sotfig out in the open on the box. He's gonna go down. Rubino will pick him up. What a tough position to play at the end for him. I mean, no matter what, he would have been sandwiched in. That will land a 13th round for Dean's house. Megas starting to warm up on this CT side. Now he's got that AK, he's got the positioning. But uh, like I said, you're only gonna see teams playing once today, once per day pretty much. And so just to, in case you're not uh, aware of the schedule, in case you want to know, next two matches that are gonna be coming up is Envious and Immortals. And after that, it will be Phase Cloud9. So two big matches actually coming up in the next, uh, in the next two hours here uh, for the qualifier. So uh, be sure to stick around. It's gonna be quick today as well. The team, it's a four team setup here. So we're gonna, you know, the team's already set up. We're gonna be able to swap very quickly between the matches. Yeah, it's great what they've done with the studio actually. It's quite impressive, so. A lot yeah. of like room, actually. It makes you think like, I, there was this much room to begin with? How? <laughs> well, Cajun is actually taking quite an aggressive hold in middle. Config is there to make sure that no one shoots him in the back. MSL gonna charge in and he's gonna trade that kill. It's searches for MSL now. Rubino has to stand tall on that B bomb side. Otherwise, things are not going to work out. He gets the first kill, taking down Dima. Not a bad start. Oh, there it is. The kill, the key one. Sotfik at least manages to open up the B site. But the rotation's already coming through here for Dignitas. Cajun B shows his hand, lets him know that he's already on short. And now Davkos, he has to be worried about the triangle closing in on him. Config with the peak and the headshot. And there's the retake coming in for Dignitas. And yeah, this is this is kind of just falling into the pattern that we expect to see here. Dignitas now, they've got control. They've got a strong economy where they can afford all their grenades. And so they can go for the CT setups and play aggressive. That was a double push to top mid, as well as the aggression in B apartments, right? Dignitas are just pushing all over the place, probing. And finally, someone has managed to overtake Davkos. That's Rubino at 25 kills and 11 deaths. So he's suddenly taken off. Um, Rubino on your screen right there doing yeah. work. Very impressive. I think he is one of those players that still can suffer from having a bad start individually. Whereas, you know, things don't work out well for him in the beginning. It seems like it sort of gets to him and he plays worse for a while at least. In best of threes, I feel like he always comes back in the second or third map if it goes to it. But uh, obviously best of one territory, you need him to be on point. That's definitely important. And look at it right now, charging into the middle, going for the spray fight. He's going to win it. Double kill for Rubino. They did trade out for Config, but it's still a great play. Where did Cajun find that kill? Oh, it must have been underpass. Okay, then. Just covering everything, Dignitas. They don't care. They're looking for fights everywhere. So now it's Sirtis and Kibaka, the last two alive here for Team Spirit, and a two on four. And 14 to six. Dignitas need two rounds here to start off strong in this qualifier, get up to that 1-0 lead over the others. And just to elaborate, in the Swiss system, you in the second round here, only winners will play against winners. If you're 1-0, if you win your first map, you'll be playing against another team that is 1-0. And that's how this works. Same to be said for the second, for the for the other half. For the losers, it's only teams that have that are 0-1 that will be facing off against each other tomorrow. So keep that in mind going forward. It's very tricky stuff. Cage is going to get caught though, and Kibak and nicely played. He's going to open up a way here onto the A site. That's incredibly sneaky. Now they just have to deal with Magus, and they've got to do it without losing anybody. They're actually going to go and check out jungle, make absolutely sure that no one is there. Cajun. He's uh, going to get the quick double kill there. 
Boom. That's a real shame because actually if they push into the site and he doesn't immediately get a kill, he's in such a bad position in that corner, but um, he managed to get one on them. And there we see Cajun with the kill on Sotvik early on. That's just, I mean, they just have such good mid control, Dignitas House, and now it's match and map point for them here. It's a nine round streak right now that Dignitas are on. Like, Ouch. just brutalizing Team Spirit. Like, it's just, it's the Dignitas show. It took a little bit of time for Dignitas to start waking up. Magus with a very slow start on the map. But now it's just the Dignitas show. They can just sweep Team Spirit here. It's match point, 15 to six. And well, look at this, Team Spirit, hardly any nades, just the rifles. They've force bought, they've just spent everything they've got, but there isn't a whole lot that they have going for them in this round here. A single flash for Certus. That's, that's all they have left. And he's up in apartments, actually, so it's going to be hard for him to flash Magus. He's not nearly impossible, so I don't know how they're going to get through that smoke unless they just try and wait it out and hope that it doesn't get re-smoked at all. Still more than a minute left. A good entry there and taking out Magus. All right, Config going to set up the flash. Calls for his teammates. Is he going to be able to make it in? Yes, he does. Stomps on somebody, but there are still two kills here from Dignitas. KGB, though, going to get hunted down by Sotvik, and Sotvik going ham. Two kills for him. That's making the difference. Now it's on MSL and they know where he's coming from. Sardis doesn't even care. He's gonna go for the repeak for some reason. And again, these small mistakes. You don't want to go for the repeak. You've got the triangle. Just wait for MSL to come to you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, they end up winning the round anyway, but that's, that is definitely a very valid point. You don't, even MSL at this point, you don't want to give him anything. Uh, he's in the top fragger, but um, you still got to be very careful. It's the seventh round for Team Spirit and uh, getting a chance to Get a couple of more rounds on the board here. The money, though, for Damien's house is, was very good. They just invested everything into this round, including, I think, an AWP for Cajun. So, yeah, actually, Magus spent 10,000 in this round buying for a teammate. So, it's pretty impressive. It's the bank. Dav cost, though. I mean, it's actually Dav. We haven't really seen much of Dav cost in the second half, but then again, he hasn't really had the op to play with either, so he's going to be feeling happy about this. He's got a sniper rifle. We saw some flashy plays from him in the first half when he was on CT side with the sniper rifle, and I think Sotvik spotted him. Yep. Sotvik again winning the duel versus Config. Man advantage now for Team Spirit. Not bad at all. Now look at the aggressive push coming into the hallways. Uh. MSL going to be charging in and taking down Kabak, and that's a great way to get the refrag over on the other side. Suddenly, Team Spirit, I'm really confused. They don't know if MSL is pushing in behind them or if he's just staying there. We can tell that he is, but right now, Team Spirit have to be very worried about where they hit because, and how much time it takes. Dima has to sort of fall back and look behind them now just because they're not sure what's actually going on. Yeah, because, I mean, both teams have got weaknesses here. Rubino and MSL have no eyes on short and on mid. And so they're just stuck here, allowing there to be one kill. Rubino will get the drop on Sotvik, and Davkos gets a leg shot on Rubino. He wants to get this kill back, though. He's, he's taking a huge risk. He's just charging into jungle. He doesn't even care. Magus boy is going to win the duel versus his teammate, Sirtis. And so now it's a two-man, basically like hit squad spread out. Davkos eventually finds the kill on Rubino. So we're into a two-on-two -two now. A site is going to be the target here for Team Spirit with 30 seconds left. I think Davkos took that miss personally. He felt like that is my kill, and I'm just going to get it no matter what happens here. Maybe... Slightly crazy at the end of it. Oh, did he actually yes! get that shot on MSL? He's gonna go for it again. Davkos is out of control. It's now a double, and Amegis, he's stuck on this ramp. How does he get out? They know that he just took the kill over here, so they should know where he is. He actually puts out a random shot in the direction of Amegis anyway, and the bomb ticking away here. Amegis is gonna reveal himself, gets a shot on Dima, but Davkos is there, out and an off, and that's gonna be the triple kill. Davkos picking it up, very, very well played. There we go. That's when the AWP comes into it, and Davkos, once again, his chance to shine and clutch it for his team. There's a strong start from Sotvik, at least. He is definitely doing some work, but Davkos does hit the no-scope through the wall there on MSL. That's un unreal. Gets the angle, gets the follow-up, does not care. He's so aggressive with this AWP. It's the exact same style that we saw from him on the CT half, where he was just keeping keeping Spirit of the fight somewhat. But when he gets that off, this guy has a huge impact. And they managed to put Dignitas in a position where they don't have any money to buy. So things are looking... Slightly brighter for Team Spirit. I'm sure if they ever got into overtime at this point, it that would just crush Dignitas. You know, just imagine how that would feel with such a big lead. 15 to 8 as well. So, I mean, it's it would take seven more rounds than in a row. Cost. They need more than Dafkos to play. I mean, Sotvik and Dima are starting to get in there, but I think Kibakin can do a lot better than he currently is. So they need a full team effort, I think, to make this work, not just the one player. They need to not lose. 
either. Rubino gonna get caught. Sotfic ready for the push coming in from Config. Gonna lose the duel regardless, but that 5-7 Config does a lot of damage. So we're back into a 4-on-4 situation here. But it does look like it's gonna be a B-side push coming in from Spirit. Not a huge fan of Dima walking up short alone with the bomb, but still, they're gonna get the job done. And it's gonna be Config now alone on the B-side for Dignitas with the 5-7. Still manages to find another kill. This guy's unreal. <laughs> really good headshot, and if he could have stayed alive a little bit longer, and maybe if KGB could buy time, there actually is a flank from Magus, who's been going on for a good 15 seconds, running all the way over here. So if Cajun and Magus can work together and just buy the time, I actually have no idea why they're both coming in from this angle. That makes zero sense to me. I would much rather have Cajun making noise in Kitchen to buy time for Magus to get out. Now instead, it's a one on three. I'm, maybe it wouldn't have mattered anyway, but I, I definitely think it would have been the better play. It's the details. It's the details. Still, I mean, Team Spirit showing that they're not willing to give up, that they're not just going to go, you know, get crushed. They're playing with the stand-in. It's a tough scenario for them. They're a massive underdog in this tournament. And this is mainly due to the fact that, I mean, Navi, Flipside, and Gambit are already in the main event. They're legend teams. And those are usually the teams that we see coming in from the CIS miners or the CIS qualifiers, right? They're the teams that kind of go through Team Spirits. They go through, team, uh, so through teams like Vega Squadron as well, right? And then we'll have, like, the Flipside. We'll have the Hellraisers here. Instead, this is now a chance for us to see that, like, the Tier 2 of the CIS region that we don't really get to see in these international tournaments very much. So good on them. I mean, they're definitely showing that they've got some firepower, at least, in DAV cost. What and and Sotvik. Sotvik is doing all right as well. 17 kills now. Yeah, he's really starting to pick it up, which is which is good news. You've got to wonder if it's a bit too late. But we do have a timeout for Dignitas here, a tactical one, obviously. Going to be um, three remaining for them. So, they're good. I mean, I think they're in a good position still. They know they have a couple of buys left before things start to get really close. Mm -hmm. And... Because so much of this, it still feels like it's on Davcost. Any round where they pick up a kill on him early on, I mean, that could be the end for Team Spirit, right? Exactly. So, it's, I mean, it's not quite a matter of just, like, find Davcost and we win the game. But it would certainly make a difference if you're taking down the one guy who's really hitting a lot of shots. Though, again, have to have to go, go ahead and give a bit of a nod to Dima and Sotvik. They've definitely woken up a bit here in this uh, second half. But it's looking like Team Spirit wants to go for something tried and true. And we're going to have that standard A smoke execute coming out from them fairly soon here. Yeah, and the setup for Dignitas is so good on this right now. Magus and Cajun are inside the smoke perimeter. Can Config is close by as well. This, if they get one opening frag here, Dignitas, it's going to be very hard to make it through. But the flashbangs on Magus, he can't see a thing. And now Cajun going to be going down as well. He was sp spraying 30 bullets practically full on blind. Dima will be going down. They don't need to overextend. This cert is also going to be dropped after getting a kill. A little bit too much aggression, I reckon, at that point in time. It's, mis it's mistakes like those that kind of lose you situations. I mean, it's almost an impossible situation now for them to lose with the three players alive in good afterplant positions. Bomb, pl well, Bomb isn't really planted for them, though. This is actually a weakness. Two players playing from pit, and they can't even spot the bomb. That smoke going down. If MSL gets across, he might have a chance, but it's not going to happen. Sotfit catches him out in the open. But there was a moment there where they were at risk, Team Spirit. Look at where that bomb is planted compared to the two players holding from pit. And the guy up in Palace. A very big risk for sure. That could have gone way out of control. Um, but it didn't. They make it work. They're now at 10 15. Team Spirit winning four rounds in a row. And the money for Dignitas is continuously broken here. They just they pretty much can't buy anything in this round. A little bit of armor, a little bit of upgraded pistols, but they're going to have to wait again. And they look all right, Team Spirit. They're excited. I think they, if you're Team Spirit right now, you're just, you just have to have a ball with it, right? You can't get too worked up. You know that you're a pretty big underdog in the tournament. It would be a massive upset if you were to able to you know, actually qualify for the main event. But still, I mean, you're here to get experience, really. I think that's the main thing. You still have four of your, co of your core roster here. You're looking to get as much experience as possible. And you're playing against the likes of Dignitas. I mean, Dignitas right now, that's how stacked this qualifier is. You know, G2, Dignitas, Nip. I mean, these are, these, are tournament, these are teams that you see on international tournaments making it deep into playoff brackets against the best, right? So this is invaluable experience for Team Spirit. Yes, absolutely true. Agent walking in. What a nice peek from Sotfik after putting up the smoke himself. That's very well done. But we'll go down to Config, who still is playing pretty well with the pistols. Still think they're going to be in an all right position. Dima actually, I think, shooting the gun away there, trying to make sure that they can't easily pick it up. Trying to get it hidden, perhaps? Yeah. I just like that Config's like, not this time. Sotfik, not. Still, two kills for Sotfik in this anti eco. So, I mean. It's still a decent position. Config will eventually find that AK. Rubino holding close with the CZ-75. This is actually a pretty decent spot to be in. You can see he just does so much damage. 
Config will find one headshot, but then he gets traded by Dafkost. But that CZ up close, it can just rip you to shreds. It's so scary. Boom, headshot. Oh, surely not like this. They're in a one on two now, but it was just a one on three. Magus has no armor and just a deagle. All they need to do is not give him the kind of shot they just did. Stay in position, let him come and find you, and it should be nearly impossible. He's going to go for a peek on Kebakim, but again, the aim punch coming through and the perfect grenade on top will make it an 11th round here for Team Spirit. Very, very well done on their part here. I mean, now, Dangerous have to be worried because they can buy in this round, but if mm -hmm. they lose this one, they, they only have a buy and a half left, more or less, in the game. They got to be careful. Uh, this is, yeah, the... It, Dignitas right now are the ones who seem to be again like we saw when um, like we saw when Team Spirit was starting to chain some rounds together in the first half. It seemed like Dignitas were getting a little frustrated. They weren't quite figuring out how Team D Team Spirit were going to push them, how they were going to actually look for the engagements. And you could tell that Dignitas were just having to learn on the fly what they're dealing with. And it's the same situation here again. Dignitas, they're constantly have to constantly. I mean, look at how they're setting up in mid. Right, it's two players on B side because they don't know if the rush is coming. And it just so happens there is one. A great flashbangs again for the Russian team. This is wonderful. Dima gonna get the kill. He goes with Surtis goes down, but Dima with the double. The flashbangs are just keeping the Danish players blind forever and ever. Config will get a good spray down on something. And the Kebakan is holding the middle, and I love this play. This is so smart. He's gonna be able to do this. He doesn't have to fight Cajun too much. If he goes down and he will, all he had to do was stay alive. That's not the best play for Kebakan there. Leaves them in a bit of an awkward position now. A man down, Davkos pushing in close with the AWP, and he misses the shot. And that just might have been it. Dima, the bomb is not planted for him. He has to push in and find this one on two, and he's gonna get a headshot, Magus boy. 16-11 is gonna be the scoreline here. Dignitas able to pick it up right at the end, and some fire to celebrate, because really, why not? I mean, that was an interesting round to end it with. I think if Kebakan had just fallen back, that would have kept Cajun occupied for so long and yeah. it would have been way better.